this is Mike Check 95 along with my cohort who has came back from the depths of wherever the hell he's been the last couple of reviews. Sitting on the couch that smells like pet. Orphan Joker, welcome back. It's been a hot minute. It's good to be back. And uh, miss my Spidey Man. You have missed quite a few because we have continued on our Spider-Man series. The movie we have chose to review today is the final Andrew Garfield film of, of his standalone series. The Amazing Spider-Man 2. So, numbers. Critics rate this film a 5.1 out of 10. Audiences, <laughs> audiences rate this film a 6.4. Which on Rotten Tomatoes, I still hate that website, is still good. The budget of this film is estimated to be $293 million. And the box office was $709 million. Let's go through the pros. Uh, you and I agreed that the soundtrack was very good because it was made by the music musical composer god known as Hans Zimmer, which in any film that he does music for, doesn't matter if it's a good film or it's a bad film, you always have good music from that man. I like the fact that there was a little bit more backstory to Peter's parents. It continued, on, continued my uh, enjoyment of liking the fact that they actually introduced his mother and father in the first film and they added more to it in this movie because I've never seen a Spider-Man film that actually introduced his parents or any like like actual media that's not in the comic books. I liked that element and that was thrown into there. And his parents aren't boring, they're cool parents. The little bits that he had, I mean, you said his accent was a little horrible and everything, but super New York. I enjoyed the little bits of Rhino we had. Like it was oh, a, Rhino. It, it, Sorry, yeah, yes. Rhino. Like I, you didn't like his accent because you could tell it was kind of fake. But, but you also can barely tell what he says. He's, he's supposed. To, Rhino is Russian in the comics. No, I know. But, the, but the, you should be able to just understand what he's saying. From the little bit that we got in there, I actually kind of enjoyed it. I wish there was more. Another pro of this film, it is a continuation from the last film, Gwen Stacy. That is two. That is literally two for one on the Spider-Man films where Gwen Stacy is actually good. Her chemistry with Peter and her little bit of chemistry she had with uh, Harry, or as you said during the entire movie, Harvey. Harvey. Freaking Harvey. The, the chemistry she had she had with both those those uh, actors was actually very very good. Even her chemistry with Jamie Fox in the elevator was, good, was good. great. Yep. Their relationship struggle between. Peter and Gwen Stacy is written so much better than the relationship struggle between Peter and Mary Jane in the original trilogy. Sorry! I'm, I'm so cool! No, I'm not cool. I, I, nobody loves me. I love you. But I, my life sucks. I mean, like, it's not very relatable. This is very relatable. Yeah, like, it, it's, both of them are very goofy and very, like, off the wall and a little cringy, but this one, I feel like it was written a little bit better. You can tell where all the writing went to. Mm -hmm. And it was it flew it was more fluid and everything, which is weird. What's the main focus of the story is 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 the the relationship is a big chunk in the story. Peter's excuses throughout the film, like cleaning the chimney and all this other bullshit, I thought were hilarious. It's, it's I, fantastic. I, I, like, it was, it's I'm totally naked under here. <laughs> and my very last pro is the most overshadowed villain I've seen in a goddamn Spider-Man film. Even more overshadowed than fucking Sandman. Electro. Mm -hmm. Even though Jamie Foxx hated being painted blue, he he took this massive turd of a, of a written script and still somehow turned it into blue electric gold. Like, like, like he did, he did he everything good. he could. And you could tell, like it's even said that he was the only person on set that was having fun. He looked good. He looked good in the trench coat. He looked good in just the shorts with the bolts. He looked good in the electric suit. He just did look good. He looked good. He made blue look good. Okay, cons. There, there's, 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 there's a lot more cons. Um, number one con. I, it's number two on the list, but I forgot to write it down as number one. The number one con of this movie is the goddamn trailers. Yes. Number one, the trailers spoil a good portion of the movie, and over half of the trailer is not the movie. Like, there's probably about. Eight, 50% of the film that we recorded didn't get put in the movie because of uh, time constraints. Which is time constraints. Which is one of the few things that I do my reading very weird. It's based off how I feel about the movie, just overall. But I will mark down if there's something in the trailer that spoils the movie, or if there's something in the trailer that's not in the movie. Because right. it's basically the people writing it lying to us. Peter was still edgy in this film. 
he, again, I know they were trying to make it to where they were trying Accents to make to him extra thick. He was trying. They were, they were trying to make Peter, Peter and Harry more relatable to how the kids were now back back in the time and everything. And I could see what they were trying to do, but it just it early looked, Harry looks wrong until he starts going crazy as the weird scout of snake and wears the leather jacket. Up until that, before that, his like weird preppy his makeover. Oh, his fucking Beatles Spider Man Three punk e- vibe. His failed attempt at trying to cosplay as emo Spider Man or yes. Spider Man Three or emo Peter Peter Parker. Dish is bad. I do have two cons about Electro, but it's not Jamie Fox at all. It's just how it was shown on the screen and how the writing was going for it. Uh, you said it was all right. I wasn't a, a big fan of the tooth, tooth gap scene. I thought that was a little goofy. How it was like uh, it magically repaired his tooth gap. His obsession and jealousy and his reasoning for why hating Spider Man, if you were to look at this and if it wasn't Jamie Foxx, it would have been horrible. Mm-hmm. Like, they, the right, like, again, the writing. Of they this put movie. in a little deleted scene that his mom is exists and it's like creeping things out yeah. and making it harder on him, which makes it a little better, but at the same time. It adds an emotional arc to him. Yeah, that, and I like that. Um, that it's, you know, he's just. It's kind of shitty life. Like, e- even without that, like, you you feel for Electro. You feel bad for him, and you want him to have that friend and everything, and mm-hmm. how he's always being lied to and used for, like, the wrong things. And that just, the, the, the like, yeah. the more that he gets lied to or whatever, yeah. that, that just drives him to the dark side. Also, when he turns into electricity, he's just hungry, and he goes to the electrical box, and he's like, oh, crap. I'm hurting people, and he tries to stop. And people are like, Take the shot, shoot him. If only he didn't get shot. So I'm tying in two points here. It's kind of the same thing. Um, I feel like how they wrote in this character and his intro to the scene and how he was placed into the movie, and I still say he shouldn't be in this movie at all, period. Everything about Harry Osborn. They would have had to change some things, but they could have still had the, the Harry dying, needing the blood scene, and not had him turn into the evil goblin deity and run around and do stuff. It could have just been him, like, they, they totally just could have skipped it out. Something happened where Gwen dies. Sorry, spoiler, you're watching this. Um, <laughs> spoiler alerts always. 2014, guys, come on. <laughs> but um, Unless you don't read the comics. They could have had her die a, a different way, and then just had Harry captured and then put in the cell at the end scene. And then him not have the Green Goblin goo, but... I'm assuming all of this pulls into the next scene. Also, it would clear up the scene where he's like, you look better. I'm like, what's it better? Like, his dad didn't look better. His dad had creepy fingernail, goopy, green claw hands. See, the, the thing was, like, I, no I was sense. able... It makes no sense. I was able to fix Spider-Man 3. I'm making a lot of comparisons to this film, Spider-Man 3, because they do the same thing. Like, I was able to fix that, yeah, that but, film by turning that film into a trilogy. But Harry's good in that. This film... Well, I'm just saying with all, all with, like with my next point here, all like there's too many plot points and story arcs going on in this film. I would have to spend probably about two weeks trying to build a better way to create this story and how to like make it work as not one film because this is definitely like three to four films put like, put into one. Like they're trying too hard. At least two. They were trying way too hard to like create the Sinister Six at the time and it's there it's just too many Easter eggs, too many teasers and whatnot. So I wrote down the Osborne disease on the cons because I mean it, the movie does explain enough what it is, but I also feel like it wasn't necessary. Like it needed more explanation as to what it is, what it, like why is it in there and whatnot. What caused him they to have just it. had Harry kicked out because he found out about the hoo ha. Mm-hmm. He didn't have to have disease. He didn't have to search around. All he had to do, just super easy, fix it, retcon, everything is just say, you know, he finds out about the special files, he tells Peter about it, he gets found out, he get kick, gets kicked out, because he gets kicked out, he gets pissed, he sets Electro free, Electro does some stuff, that at the end, Gwen dies. How she dies? Yes. You're, you're, because, uh, because... Your choice. Harry... Mixed bag. Yeah, because Harry set Electro free, he's put in prison. Yeah. And that starts the crazy bad. Another what the fuck, um, anybody who watches this, like, read comics maybe understands this stuff, one of my favorite scenes, mostly because of epic music, 
is drawing the calculator, finding the coins, go coins, going to the subway, and finding the secret subway thing that pops up from the ground. I really love that scene. First time I watched it, I was like, this is freaking awesome. But I was also like, why the heck didn't he just get a hold of some random file and plug it into some computer and read it? They do like this whole epic, like Ninja Turtles goes like, to the subway, the fact that they and thing pops out of the ground. Like, how did he get there? How did the dad do it by himself? How much money did he have? Like, a bunch of more questions than it gives answers. He could have just been on a laptop that he pulled up somewhere, or some special little discs that he set something so, that shoots I want up to information. Say, and so I love that scene. It's super awesome. It's him getting have one on one dad time. He finds out his epicness why he's super why he's super because dad put the DNA in there. All the epicness it gets his his dad just didn't abandon him because he was a trash boy like a lot of things that Peter needed in his life at that time but and it was and it was this cool epic subway scene but it didn't have to happen in the subway and I felt like that was just something that was weird that never made sense to me. so I want to say like when it came to that I think they were going to go that they were going to use like that, that as like the, secret layer the subway scene uh, like the subway layer like more in the next two films because I feel it's like super they secret, might, they, super secret hideout. Because that's like a, that's free access. Because he had a shit ton of those coins. That's yeah. free access to a fucking laboratory. He yeah. can go there whenever he wants. But I want to know how the fuck, like how how do you, how the fuck do you like close it off and keep it hidden? They didn't show yeah, how but, he closed it up. And how do you like how does they, I just don't know how he built it and nobody knows about it. That's just not a one man deal. No, it's like it's like like the Batman. Builds a giant bat cave. Nobody knows it's a bat cave. Like, cool. Somebody had to build a bat cave. My last con's like a tiny little nitpick. I don't know if you actually caught it, but the scene where Spider-Man is sitting in uh, Harry's Harvey's uh, office area, uh, Harvey, <laughs> and he's trying to get Spider-Man to give him his blood, and like, I don't know if you noticed, but like, it sounds like Garfield's voice changed from muffled from like the first two lines, and then after that second line, it cleared up. Yeah. I so I noticed that that was an audio change that kind of fucked up in the movie or whatever. So that was kind of weird. Throwing in the goblin stuff like people are supposed to know what it means. It's just total trash writing. Just, just being like, oh, by the way, the, the glider's in here. He looks green and he throws a pumpkin. You're supposed to know what this is. Yeah, because there's, like, there's, the the there's, there's a deleted scene. scene where, where, how did it happen? There's a scene where they actually show what the, what the suit was and actually well, what it did and it, like what was made of it. What I mean is the original Spider-Man, like even in the comics... Like, I mean, I don't know Sorry, even in the animated, it's like, I am Goblin. Oh, this is a green thing. It ex This is a pumpkin bomb. It explodes. Here's just like, by the way, first thing, two seconds, boom. What the fuck was that? Why did it explode? Why is this girl dead now? I'm kind of glad this is technically the last bad Spider Man oh. movie we're going to be watching. And Rhino. They put Rhino in the damn trailer. Rhino is a very important character in the original Spider Man, in the animated series, and comics. And he, like, just before the fight erupts, it's like swings a sewer, a sewer lid. Man, 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 it's, cover. it's over. It's over. Pretty it's much like, all of Rhino's ah! scenes in the movie are crammed into the trailer. That was just fucking sad. <laughs> okay, so going into my comments, stuff that I, used, I wanted to discuss more about. Um, I, I mean, we kind of covered most of it, but I actually wanted, I want, like, if they were to continue this series, I wanted more, like, in depth, more, like, deep storytelling into, like, Peter's parents' secret life and everything. Yeah. So it went on because I was like, why like, is the subway there? How like, does it work? Granted, like some parts, it felt very out of place and very um, confusing. But at the same time, I was drawn to those parts because it was interesting. It was new. Like I said before, I'd never seen a, a, a media, like filming-wise, where they actually mentioned Spider-Man's parents. I was always exactly intrigued by. It. I wanted to learn more and everything. Were the flashbacks really necessary? Like, like I know that he was having that inner struggle with. Um, whether or not to keep Gwen Stacy in his life or not because of the promise he made with her father in the first film. But was it really necessary to have like scenes where he would like slow down time and he's just randomly there? I feel like just not having My dad? Yeah. Yes, because it's it's a big, super important part of the struggle. But at the same time, it's, they it's did it like 16 this. times in the movie. I would say only like maybe twice, and that's good enough. They did it so many times. They did times. it four times. That's too much. I'm no, okay I'm okay with like once the beginning. It's, it's once right the when he when he forgets that he's supposed to be holding this promise. This next comment, I won't get into too much because it's a spoiler for No Way Home, but uh, obviously we've seen No Way Home as much as we've like talked about and everything, but I 
go, the reason why I'm going back and watching these films is because I watched No Way Home and I want to go back and watch the old films when we lead to reviewing No Way Home. Finally, after watching these Andrew Garfield Spider-Man films, I have nitpicked the hell out of his Spider-Man character itself, but I've actually learned to appreciate Garfield Spider-Man more. Like, I, there's still things I don't like, but it's it's his version of Spider-Man. That's his Spider-Man. That's that one. Going into the fight scenes, the two like literally the two best parts of this movie is everything involving Jamie Foxx Electro and yes. both of the Electro Spider-Man fights again yeah. involving so Electro. Awesome. He is and the music overshadowed. Is so yes, yes. Like, da, 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 fantastic. Again, like just just get rid of Harry Osborn in this film or Harvey Osborn. Like get him out of here. He's not. He's not. Okay. Well, from here on out, he he's needs hard. to be important because. He, He's an important part of the company, but he doesn't need to become a bad guy. They treated like Norman Osborn was dying. He's not. He's mutating. Like, that's easy to tell, and, like, I, I just feel like that it was just shitty-ass writing explaining yeah. that he... We oh, have a disease. We're sharing a disease. Didn't have to be... No disease, no turning bad, no and goblin. My no fellow. goblin, just, just Harry Harvey. Harry Harvey. And my that's final comment, which we have pretty much beat to death like it's a dead horse with a wooden stick that's probably broken and dripping and all this yep. weird, disgusting, crazy shit. Walking. So much of the goddamn trailer was cut from the fucking movie, and all that stuff that was cut out from the trailer and all this other deleted scene shit on the disc and not on the disc, if they were to somehow wedge it together in a good way, I feel like this story would have been more comprehensive. Yeah, it would have woven a lot better. It would have made more sense. It would still feel a little cramped like Spider-Man 3, but I feel like it would have been more of a lazy river than Spider-Man 3 was. With the spider cut. Okay. I want to make it a personal goal to try to fix this film, but I feel like I have to watch it another four times just to figure out what's going on. And it's it's such a pain to watch it because it it's good, then it's bad. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad. Good bad. <laughs> does this film have more Easter eggs or does it have more product placement? Because, oh my god. So much. The Sony, 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 Sony. It, well, the Google. Google was everywhere. There was food everywhere. <laughs> there was a lot. But ready? Did it, did it, Science time with Josh. Um, and I'm Josh. The opening plane scene <laughs> does make sense. All the windows shattering when one was shot won't make sense. Um, the air, the door shouldn't have flapped open. It's a big plane thing that people think is wrong. If the latch breaks, it's not gonna. It's gonna open sideways like like uh, if it's a plane going forward, it's gonna open like this. So it's not gonna rip off. They designed planes like this on purpose. The air pressure is gonna keep the window down. It's like trying to open your car door going 65 miles an hour. You can't do it. Papa Parker. Well, surviving? Yeah, surviving. Yeah, with that deleted scene that I still wish was on the disc. Mm -hmm. I have to YouTube search that shit. Other science, such as electromagnetism. Oh, God. Uh, <laughs> makes sense. The, the battery testing scene is very accurate with the electricity and exploding, even having the lead acid battery leak out and bubble. Very scientific. Oh, yeah. Makes sense. Having linked GN DNA between Peter and his dad... And the spider work actually makes it's it's not science today, but it, it makes it a scientific makes... understanding that like when you do when you give like a heart transplant or a different transplant, it won't link up genetically and it'll fall apart, break or, or cause damage. So that's actually really cool. The other is not science. The weird mutating goo goblin thing. One, it just doesn't make sense storyline wise. You no know, goblin is this creepy thingy. It's 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 not so much a mutated thing, which I know there's it's later, but that later is dumb. Um, you got something to say? I'm writing out the problem of the movie. Oh yes. Oh my god! Like I want to like this movie. I want to like this movie. I want to like this movie. <laughs> Same, but I want to give this movie a high rating. It's because, again, like for me, it's sad when the most overshadowed character in the entire film is the one carrying the film on his goddamn electric blue black. <laughs> okay. On his goddamn electric well, blue back. I'll just get my number first. So, normally, this would be up there 
with want to watch again because I did want to watch it again when I watched it the first time. But, but the only one, 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 one thing that will make me drop a score other than me just like having feels for it is if you put something in the trailer, which I watched when I was a kid, and they hint at things, and then it's not in the movie when you go to watch it. So sad little childhood me was pissed that there wasn't more rhino scenes, and then they're stuck with the damn trailer. It wasn't a damn movie, and that was not me now. This was, it was blatantly 100% obvious to little me when little me was watching this movie, and I was pissed. And so this movie, I'm gonna get a seven and a half. Because, oh. you, can, you can keep going, you can keep going. Just, but if my heart wants to give it a nine. So, because the, I want to point, watch the movie and I want to watch it again and I want to watch it everything again. Involved but in every time I watch it, I get pissed. I'm going to give it a 7.75. 7 7.75 is your final yes, rating. Yes, because I really want to give it a 9, but I have to cut it down. Because it's not just it's not just me as an adult upset. Uh, me as an adult excited. Sorry, we'll cut this in editing. It's not just me knowing now that the trailer didn't match the movie. Little me. Like, first time watching it, I was pissed. And every time I want to sit down to watch it, I get excited, and then I get pissed because I remember that they screwed it up <laughs> every time. Like I said, I want to like this movie, but this, this movie commits two sins that are a big problem with superhero comic book films to this day. Number one, I call it the Batman Robinism. They, they put too many claw points into the movie, and it just makes it cluttered. It makes it a mess. It just looks like a bad case of a drunk night of... Jenga. The other sin that it commits, I really hate saying this because it's a movie I actually enjoy, but all every other film after this movie came out had tried to replicate its success and it done a horrible job at it. This movie also has the Dark Knightism. I call it that because after the Dark Knight it came out, every single fucking superhero film up until recently, because they finally figured shit out, had to be dark, had to be gritty, had to be sad and depressing and it's just like all happiness was just ripped out of your heart and everything the thing is is like you can't recreate success you just have to find a different formula for it and they just kept trying to recreate 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 like man is still had that issue mm. both amazing spider-man films had this issue yeah. bvs and justice, oh, league, I, I, justice league had this issue justice they league, finally yes. fixed it after justice league the first justice league came out but like it's just that's the problem from like tw 2008 to like 2016 all superhero films were the same thing it, it has too many problems with it the writing is atrocious as fuck The only reason, my okay, my original rating for this film before watching this was probably going to be a five out of ten because this because usually like you've heard before when it comes to a movie that I like but I also don't like and I don't know what to do with it it gets a five out of ten. Then I remember seeing the electro scenes and I'm like, oh shit, this is going to get an eight out of ten. And then every time Harry Osborn <laughs> and Goblin came on the screen, that Harvey, that, that dropped it back down to a six. And then there was the rhino bits and everything, and then all the missing elements that they needed to beef the story up, but they had to cut it down due to time constraints. But then adding a bunch of malarkey that totally didn't need to be there, just or didn't make extra sense. Time, yes. So, I love you, Jamie Fox. You are the star of this movie. You are the reason why I go back and watch this piece of garbage. But this film for me has to get a six and a half. I know that is kind of low. I think you would probably say it's kind of low, but it's it's just there's well, it's, too much bullshit and too much stuff going on and too much trying to replicate other things that have nothing to do with this movie that ruins it. This is the thing. If you watch a trash movie that gets a three, you don't feel bad giving it a three. What makes this review hard is you want to give it something higher and you have to give it such a low score. That's what because it sucks. There's good elements because in this you, movie. You, yes, it's 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 a painful six. It is. It's a painful six and a half. Okay, so it's a painful seven point seven five. I will say one more thing. I the the way that they filmed and acted out the the Gwen Stacy death was actually done very well. Yes, it was. It was done pretty well. 
Just take out super just take out, I still cry. Just take out Harvey Osborne. I have one more funny uh, th- quip to say before we end this review. Uh, Harry's weak. Rhino's heavy. Break Gwyn's neck. Aunt May spaghetti. This is Mike Check 95 with my cohort. <laughs> That's fucked up. <laughs> Orphan Joker. We're all orphans in this channel. No parents here. But anyways, we are signing out. And this is the final Garfield film. And we are going to be moving on to the Tom Holland films. And since it, since it helps with the story a bit better, we're going to alternate. We're going to watch Tom Holland film Spider-Man. And then due to story-wise, then we're going to watch Tom Hardy. Catch you next time.